Hi everyone, welcome to Wool and Spinning, episode 76. Uh, my name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as Well for Pearls. I am coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia, and I am live here with my husband and our two kids and our two dogs, and my son is actually starting kindergarten in a couple months, and we were out doing some back to school shopping yesterday, which is the first time we've had to do that, which was really fun. Uh, it was also 30 degrees and we were all exhausted when we got home. <laughs> um, so we've been having a lot of fun this summer. Um, the kids had swimming all week and um, they had like five days of lessons every morning and neither of them passed, which I knew that they wouldn't, but they had tons of fun. So I'm trying to get them in for this coming week as well. But uh, there's waiting lists for the lessons because it's at an outdoor pool near us, which is really fun. And uh, it's a lot of sun and a lot of, um, you know, time in the water, but it, they just love it. So it's been really kind of a nice start to our summer. Um, I have a couple of announcements to make. We've got Tour de Fleece going on in the Ravelry group. If you have any questions about Tour de Fleece or you're wondering more, please go over to the Ravelry group, Wool and Spinning, and... Um, have a look in the main thread back at some of those initial posts where we talked about um, sort of what we were doing. Uh, Tour de Fleece runs until July 24th. Please correct me in the chat room if you guys, if I'm wrong, um, which is actually my son's actual fifth birthday, which is really cool. Um, we have some prizes that we will award uh, at the beginning of August for that. I am actually going to record the show just a couple of days early so that I can make all those announcements because we will be probably camping when the show will come out at the beginning of August. So um, as you guys know, the shows are um, this summer, they are twice a month. So first week of the month and the third week of the month, and that will be the same for August. Um, and we uh, I decided to start a chatter free finished objects thread in the tour de fleece for tour de fleece because it was getting too difficult to see what people had done and what people were and just the chatter. So please, when you finish your spins, please go into the um, finished objects show off page one post per person please and just keep editing and adding photos as you finish spins so uh, I know one person that I, I'm really sorry I can't remember your name um, I know on slack she's glow with hearts oh shoot I can't remember um, anyways she's got one right now she's just done an incredible amount of spinning and she's got like an entire like one photo of all of the skeins lined up you don't have to do that but it is great to see all of that spinning in one spot so at the end of the tour if you want to line up all your stuff and submit your photo you'll have a few days to do that um, I am going to cut it off around July 27th or July 28th so please have your stuff um, posted and uh, shown off in the FO's thread it is chatter free. If I see chatter, I'm going to delete the, th the post right away. And um, so sorry about that. Just hit like if you uh, love people's stuff. Um, I think that's it for, for Tour de Fleece. Um, th a big thank you to Nina and uh, Becca who've been um, cheerleading and helping me out with the tour stuff. I haven't been able to get online very much and uh, just because of how our summer is going and I've been um, really appreciative of Becca and Nina and of your um, support of people online because there's been a few times where I haven't been able to uh, check in. So thank you to you too. I really, really appreciate um, your help. I think that's it for the tour. We've got some other spin-alongs and stuff going on in the group, but if you're curious about more, um, the, oh, her username is Glow with Beauty from Within. That's right. And yeah, she's managed to do just an incredible amount. Um, there are a bunch of spin-alongs and um, stuff going on in the, in the Ravelry group. I know many of us have kind of put all of that stuff on hold for uh, the tour, which I was, I, I appreciate. I, I, myself have done the same thing um, and I think that uh, a lot of that stuff will get more active again after the tour is finished because we can only do so many things at once right there's only 24 hours in the day we're all given 24 hours <laughs> um, so please just um, have a look in the Ravelry group if you're interested in doing some um, of your some of those spin alongs and stuff just um, have a look if you're interested in joining some stuff and getting involved I want to do the Patreon calendar giveaway today because, um, of course, it's the third show of the month and we draw from the Patreons from June and I give something away. I'm really pleased. This is what it looks like. And there's uh, inspirational photos inside for each month. This is an awesome desk calendar. 
I don't think I've ever shown you how it goes, but basically you just fold the back and then it sits like that on your desk. Um, so the winner this month was Ellen Levy. Ellen, congratulations. If you could please send me your address, that would be awesome. Um, and congratulations. I'll pop that in the mail for you in the next week or so if you could just get back to me. I wanted to make a really quick announcement, a really quick kind of self-promotion plug, I guess you could say. Um, in the most recent episode of Ply Magazine, which is the uh, Bob and Led episode, issue, episode. It's not like they're shows. Although sometimes it feels that way. Holy smokes. Um, they're just so chocker block with so much. Um, I have an article in um, th this uh, episode, this episode, this issue of Ply Magazine. Um, I wrote it um, learning to spin on a Lendrum quill. Um, the quill attachment on the Lendrum. I should have brought mine down and shown you because it's just crazy. This is actually a Hansen quill. Um, that's what they photographed for the article. But I um, have the Lendrum quill. And you know what? I'm going to write it down because I'll forget otherwise. If you guys want to see what the quill for the Lendrum looks like in real life, because in the photos it doesn't look as scary, um, I will show it to you next. Next. Um, next show because it is so crazy um what i was shocked about and what surprised me the most was how big it is um it is just um huge like the thing is like out to here and actually i don't know if i wrote this in the article but it's actually a bit too long for me to spin at because i have to i'm not very tall i'm five three um, I'm almost 5'4", um, and my feet reach my Lundrum quite well, but um, to have my Lundrum close enough for me to treadle and not have the quill like poking me is um, a bit of a feat. So um, it's probably not a piece that I'm going to use a ton in the future, but I, there are a few things that it definitely lends itself to. Um, and I loved spinning long draw off of it. That was really cool. So, all right, so for in today's episode, we have an answer to ask anything, which has been a long time. We haven't done one of those in a very long time. I never really got into the habit of doing these because I find a lot of the answer, a lot of the questions are very um, uh, easy just to type out a quick answer. Um, but there was a really good one in the thread this week and I thought that we would include it. So, and then I just wanted to chat about all of my Tour de Fleece spins. So um, I have a few things that are going on and uh, I thought I would just go through each of them and chat about um, about each of them really quickly and you guys can ask some questions and um, yeah so let's get on with the show Just reading the uh, chat thread. Okay. Um, let's get on with um, answer the answer to ask anything. So um, Carol had asked, and there's already been a couple of responses to her question in the um, in the Ravelry group. But I really wanted to chat about this here because it's a question that I get all the time from my students, and. Um, I, I thought, you know, it's a great um, opportunity for us to chat about it on the show because I'm sure that people in the chat channel will have um, some input as well. So this is her question. Being a new spinner, I don't know what I don't know. That's so true. <laughs> we all don't know what we don't know. Uh, that's why we're here to learn. I spun my first bobbin for a combo spin. Well done, Carol. Congratulations. Taking on a combo spin as a new spinner is a big feat. Um, the second bobbin looks great. The first one could have been better. 
Is there anything that can be done to improve the bobbin that I'm not thrilled about? Maybe I'm being too critical. The bobbin on the left is the first bobbin I spun. So this is her photo. Let me see if I can get it big so you guys can see it. All right, so that is her bobbin. So this is the one that she spun first and this is the bobbin that she spun second. So there were a few things um, that I wanted to comment on that I thought made this question a really great question to ask. Um, the first thing is you're a new spinner. Um, you're beginning, you're learning. Um, I used to find when I was a new spinner that when I would spin anything more than about four ounces, so if I was taking on like a sweater spin or I was taking on a big shawl spin, anything over four ounces. So. When I was a new spinner, I would often do a lot of eight ounce spins where I would take two braids and I would spin one to one bobbin, one to the other bobbin and I apply them together. And as a new spinner, when you're spinning more than about four ounces, by the time you get to the end of your project, so six ounces, eight ounces, your spinning has improved. And the reason for that is because the more you spin, the better you get. Um, the more you work with a fiber, the better you get. So by the time you get to your second, third, fourth bobbin, your spinning has improved. There isn't really much you can do about this when you're a new spinner because the reality is you're still practicing and you're getting better and things are going to improve as you do more. Um, the problem with a combo spin partially is if you didn't choose all of the same base fiber for your spin, you're constantly changing. So part of the learning process of that first bobbin was getting used to that constant change, doing your joins um, and different staple lengths as you worked through um, your first bobbin. So what I can see initially so what I'm saying is you have to be very kind to yourself. Be gentle to yourself. Um, the reality is your second bobbin, your singles are thinner, I, which I can tell from the photo. Um, yes, they're more consistent. Your twist is more consistent. Um, but that said, um, be kind to yourself because the um, that you're learning and you know this you'll still get awesome yarn at the end and you will still get yarn that you can oh it's work calling <laughs> um, that you can use. Um, so what I want to say is uh, there's a few things that you can do because the first bobbin is overspun. You can put it as Katrina suggested, you can put it back through your wheel and take out some of that added twist. That'll make a big difference. The problem with that is if you have areas that are underspun that don't have enough twist, um, they're going to come apart. They're going to drift apart. And when you're a new spinner, that does often happen. You've got areas that are overspun and areas that are underspun. So just be aware of that. And you may end up as you spin, as you back spin through and take some of that twist out, um, you may have to go back and fix it. You may have to spin it again. Um, so what I would say is you have two options. One, you can just take it as a learning experience, ply it, um, oh, and the other thing is if you put it back through your wheel, just before I uh, go on to your options, before you put it back through your wheel to take the twist out, you have to think um, that when your bobbins are finished, okay, this is a finished bobbin, okay, what is at the end of my bobbin was the last spun, okay, so this is over here is the last spun fiber that I did. So when you go to ply, if you put it back through your wheel and take some of that twist out, um, hopefully you don't have those underspun areas um, that are gonna drift apart. So just sort of think about that. But what you're gonna end up with is a bobbin where you spun from, from the first spun to the end, which is your second bobbin. So it's gonna look like this. And then your, your other bobbin is actually gonna be reversed. So your first spun is gonna be back at the end. So one of the reasons why I sometimes don't recommend putting your singles back through, um, if you, you need to do it to both. The problem is if your second bobbin isn't over twisted and you put it back through your wheel, you're going to um, take the twist out and you're gonna have a singles that is underspun. So there's a couple of ways to do that. You can use a bobbin winder and you can turn your bobbin to the side so that you're reeling off of the bobbins from side to side. So you'd be reeling off of them 
This is getting very complicated. This is why this was a good ask anything. So if you're gonna spin off of, if you're gonna reel your singles from one bobbin to the other, um, you need to um, make sure that you're going from the sides of the bobbin so that you're not adding or taking away twist. Um, now, so you maybe don't wanna do that. So if it was me, I would still ply them. I would take it as a learning experience and recognize that your first bobbin is different from your second bobbin, that your first bobbin is overspun in areas, that your second bobbin is probably more even. And I would just ply them and take it as a learning experience, knit a big, big swatch, like, you know, a big, well, not that big, but like a, like a big 10 by 10 swatch. You'll be amazed after you wash and finish your yarn and after you wash and finish your knitted swatch, how awesome it looks even if your yarn isn't perfect. Um, it's part of the learning process and it's how you get better. The other thing you can do if you really don't wanna apply them together and you're really feeling like one is better than the other, um, you can make two center pull balls and ply each bobbin to, it, to itself. Um, you're gonna end up with a first bobbin um, your first yarn will be a little bit thicker and it'll be a little bit overspun in places, but if you pull your singles really tight while you're plying and really smooth down, you can get those areas out and make sure that they're not um, overspun or that they're plying together nicely. And then with your second bobbin, you can make a center pull ball and ply that together and you'll have a thinner, more consistent yarn, but you won't have as much. So it's up to you, but that is my answer and um, it's a big... Um, it's a big question and it's a big topic and I get asked it all the time. And so I think it's really great to answer it here. I'm gonna look in the chat channel and just um, see what people, other people are saying because you guys always have great ideas as well. Um, yeah, see Becca says, um, I always have found that my cha my spinning changed over a large spin when I was first starting, absolutely. Or when I try a new fiber and it takes me a while to get used to, absolutely. Um, that's why control cards are really helpful and spinners control cards. Um, I don't know if I have one of mine right here, but like things like this are really helpful. Um, you know, they give you the gauge and you can keep checking um, how thick your singles are and keep checking um, for consistency. Um, so Leanne says her spindle spinning, she's noticed vast improvements since she started Tour de Fleece on her spindles. Yeah, absolutely, because um, spindling is a whole other skill set. Um, Rebecca's seeing herself get better and faster. That's fantastic. Yeah, 12 ounces of all the same fiber. That'll definitely help you to get better. The more you practice, the better you get. Absolutely, Katrina. Um, place the Kate as far away from the wheel as you can and give that twist extra space to spread out when you're plying. That's awesome. So the longer, um, so if you put your Kate way back there and you're spinning at your wheel here when you're plying, it'll give that those singles a chance to um, rest and for that some of that twist to dissipate um, and to spread itself along the length of the singles. The other thing I would say is try to let your your bobbins rest for a few days because of that first bobbin. So um, don't go ply as soon as you finish your second bobbin. Just give yourself a day or two. I'd even say maybe a few days um, and just let them rest so that you've got nice relaxed singles and then ply with your Lazy Kate way, way, way back there. All right, I think that about covers it. Um, if anybody has any more to add to that question or any more to, um, um, any more thoughts or anything, please pop them into the Ask Anything um, thread on in the Ravelry group, and um, that would be great to hear from everyone. All right, let's get on with spinning stuff. Um, okay, so the first thing that I finished for Tour de Fleece was my skein of flax. This is just a little mini skein. I am just gonna focus the camera. Um, there we go, and now I lost my pop-up chat thing. Here we go. Uh, so this is uh, scoured and mangled. So mangling means, I'm just gonna unskein this for you guys. So mangling means that I took the skein of flax, and now linen, and I went like this all the way along. And rough, like really rough. Um, and I scoured it in soda ash, uh, washing soda, soda ash, washing soda and 
What was the other thing that I used? Not Orvis paste. Was it Synthropole? No, d just regular detergent. Um, I used a little bit of regular detergent. I, d I finished it based on how we had been taught in the class. Um, I simmered it for an hour. I never let the water actually come up to a boil. And uh, I just left, um, left it on the stove. I think um, this was some uh, flax that I'm just trying to get my thoughts together. Um, this was flax that we were given in the class to spin. So she had actually redded it herself and um, had combed it out for us while we were in class and then gave us a strick. So a length of comb top is called comb top, um, but a length of flax is called a strick, S-T-R-I-C-K. It's an old um, English word. And um, she gave that to us to work through. So she had given us other stuff to work through as well and other brands and other stuff. So we had some super fine line flax from Louette to spin. Um, we had some now discontinued, oh no, not, none of this stuff was discontinued. We had some bleached flax, which is this stuff here, which was absolutely super unpleasant to spin. Um, we had some super fine line flax, which is this stuff. It was wonderful, I loved it, it's from Louette. Um, we had some, so this is from my Bast Fibers course that I took at the end of June at uh, Anwig um, in Victoria. This was Ashland Bay Flax, which was absolutely beautiful. And this was, so this one is singles and this one is plied. Um, so this one is the same, it's the Louette uh, super fine line flax, but it's plied and this one I left as singles. And then this one is also Louette, but it's dyed. So, um, and then at the end of the course, she gave us a strick of it to spin and to play with. So a couple of things, um, these samples took forever to make. They're only two grams and they took forever. Um, we worked on them. She gave us the little bag of fiber um, on the first day and we I finished my samples the afternoon of the second day because we were doing lots of stuff in between. Um, my absolute most favorite to spin was the Louette Superfine and the Ashland Bay. These two um, are basically, they're processed in China. Um, and they're bleached and everything in China and dyed in China. And part of the problem with these two, and everybody hated them compared to the other ones because the other two were such great quality. So these two are carried by Louette. Um, but when they bleach stuff and when they start processing it and, and whatnot and get it ready for dyeing, um, they cut the fibers. So the fibers, it was almost like spinning toe, which is the waste from flax um, that this stuff theoretically doesn't include. But the because the fibers get cut so short it was really hard to spin it consistently um, it was very difficult to get a nice yarn and uh, even with the green I ended up with a really lovely yarn I don't know if that's gonna be too close but look at how fuzzy it is um, it didn't it didn't uh, stay nice and smooth like flax is supposed to um, whereas with this one with my Ashland Bay, you can see like just if I hold it back a bit, how smooth it stayed. It's not perfect because I'm still learning, but it was better. Um, and then working with flax that she had processed herself um, and spun. And then I did leave this as singles because I wanted to see what the finishing was like um, before I decided what to do with it. So I have no idea how much is here and I really need to um, decide if I'm going to apply it or not. Um, but I really actually kind of like it as singles too. And I did weave it up. Um, I wove up a little sample and I will post that in the um, show when it goes live on, uh, uh, when it's released on Wednesday. So that is my first spin of Tour de Fleece. And it's nice to get that done because I really wanted to have it for the samples for with my um, course stuff because I'm presenting the course and what I learned at the course um, at the November Guild meeting. So, because they sponsored me to be able to go. So I wanted to uh, do that. 
Um, if you would like an example of what toe looks like after it's been spun, this is an example of toe yarn. So this is actually cabled. And that is toe yarn. So you can see how much fuzzier it is. Um, this is this is actually like starting to get into like making rope. This is toe rope that we made. How cool is that? So um, it's fuzzier. It's not as smooth. Um, it's just as strong. It's just the waste that comes off of combing the flax. So um, unfortunately, when they cut all of the fibers when they're processing them. Um, and bleaching them or whatnot, um, unfortunately it kind of ends up being a bit unpleasant. So that makes it difficult for the hand spinner. <coughs> All right. The next thing I have been working on, sorry for the crinkling bags, I'm just trying to keep everything organized because of course, like I said, I have to um, present this at Guild. And uh, I need to make sure I know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's always nice to look like you actually know what you're talking about or know what you're doing. Um, Cause, uh, and I really wanna, once I present a guild in November, once I get that done, I am gonna, I, I have 200 grams, I showed you guys this last time, I have 200 grams of flax to spin. And um, I'm really hoping I can incorporate that and this into a big project and do like a big linen shawl um, just for learning to see what it's like to see a, a, a linen project from start to finish because uh, I'm really, I, I want to get better at spinning um, flax and it's definitely a skill for sure. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or if you follow the blog, wellforpearls.com, you will have seen this finished spin. This is my American Tunis that I have been working on since, I was trying to remember when I had first started it and I was gonna look it up and I never did. Um, so actually I think I will now because I'm on Ravelry anyways and I have my phone here and you guys are so patient and so lovely that you won't mind me looking because I have been working on this for a long time. This is local, it was local fleece and fiber. Um, I We did it as a guild study and um, well not as a guild study it was part of our, our breed study um, so this is what it looked like when we first got it oh, I'll move my... there it is do you like all my stickers the kids have been putting them on my phone <laughs> uh, and if I take them off they want to know where my where my stickers have gone um, and I combed it by hand the initial little bit which was really fun and I really enjoyed doing that um, and then I, I since then I've been able to get a hackle and so I hackled the rest so the first skein um, and actually I left it upstairs because I've been trying to keep the office clean but you guys should see it it's just terrible there's just tons of stuff on the floor right here it's just awful my first skein ended up being sort of a sport weight light sport weight um, and of course I remember on the show I you know um, oohed and awed over it and said how much I loved it um, so I hackled the rest of it and I spun it up onto my Lendrum and then I created um, um, This was all of it all spun onto one bobbin and then I um, reeled it off into two Separate bobbins so that I would be spinning from the f from the first end like from the first spun um, I should, have, I should have switched my cameras around. I totally forgot you guys, sorry. Um, I spun it from the first um, first spun. So I reeled it off onto the onto um, other bobbins so that I would be able to spin it, apply it from the first spun so that I could keep it as smooth as possible because I knew with the long wool it would have a halo. Um, and let me just get it into focus here. There we go. Can you guys see that sheen? I've got the can the lights on in here too, like the my floodlights, and so like you can really see the sheen coming off of there, like it's just incredible. This is also um, quite a bit um, more even than my other stuff that I combed, um, hand combed. I think with the hackle you get these huge combed top clouds basically, and they are so. I think you just get into a real rhythm and I was spinning short backward the staple length on the Tunis is about because Eve is wondering um, how long is it I think it's like 
five to six inches. It was quite long because um, it hung off of my hackle quite, quite, quite a distance. It was at least five inches and I'd say probably closer to six and I um, the tips didn't after washing the tips didn't open up really nicely so I kind of teased them with the comb before really like hackling it out and that really worked quite well um, and this is just like holding a cloud um, it it's softer than I thought that it would be um, I don't know how it will wear although it is a slightly um, not coarser wool but it's definitely a coarser it's not it's not merino but it doesn't feel like um, Coriadale which I was surprised I thought it would feel like Coriadale but I think because it's hand combed and um, I washed it in unicorn power scour the um, the fleece and then I finished it in unicorn fiber wash and it's just created a lovely lovely yarn so I'm really happy with how that turned out if you ever have access to Tunis I would highly recommend trying it um, it was a really great spin um, and oh, the other thing I wanted to mention about this, which was really cool. I think part of the reason why it created such a light, lofty yarn is because I matched my ply twist to my singles twist. So when I spun my singles per length of fiber, um, no, every time I drafted, um, I treadled once and I can't remember what the ratio was that I was working on. I think I was working at um, eight to one. And then when I went to ply, I put in two thirds of the singles twist that I had put in. So I put in um, roughly six twists per inch to finish it off. And that worked out really well. I ended up with a really, really nice twist angle. Um, and a really nice consistent yarn and I think it really preserved the underlying um, qualities of the fiber if that makes sense like it really preserved the underlying quality of the fleece itself and uh, yeah I've still got a halo because it's a long wool but it's a really pleasant halo and like you can see it down here along along the edge against the uh, wood it's it's just really pleasing so uh, yeah I'll I'll stop um, continuing on and on and on about that because I'm just really really pleased with how that turned out um, and I'm excited to to use it I don't know how much I have I need to go back now that it's dry I need to go back and actually count my yardage um, but if I have enough I'm gonna put it with my next project that I'm going to show you and I'm gonna um, do a half half if I have enough I don't know if I'll have enough we'll see um, so my next project that I want to talk about is my first bobbin is done and you will notice that I have different bobbins this is gonna roll away so I am actually borrowing from my friend Kim I am borrowing um, her Ashford the kids are trying to break in Mommy. Nora I'm just on the on the computer Oh, what do you want to tell me? What do you want to tell me, Nora? What do you want to tell me? Come in. I'm live streaming, Nora. I'm talking to everybody. Do you want to come and show them your goggles? Mm -hmm. Come and say hi to Nora. Let me just pull up the chat channel. What do you think about your new goggles? <laughs> Are they good? You like them? We got them yesterday. Okay, I'm gonna keep talking though, okay? So I borrowed um, from my, um, everybody's yelling, hi Nora, hi Nora, hi Nora. <laughs> uh, from my friend Kim, I borrowed her Magicraft Susie. Um, and I think the wheel is, I think she told me it's like 25 years old or something. Um, it's just a fantastic wheel. I'm really enjoying working on it. And um, I'm gonna lend it to my friend Diana next when I'm finished with it. So I'm gonna finish up this project and then I'm gonna, um, pass pass the bobbins on or pass the wheel on to uh, Diana so that she can play and um, I've been really enjoying working on it it's been giving me a really even spin it's a really even wheel um, it's just got a wonderful feel it's nice and heavy it's not particularly portable you can actually turn the top part around so you can turn the flyer and everything down and then there's a carry handle which is really cool but it's a heavy wheel it's six and a half kilos um, I'm not sure what that is in pounds. If somebody could do the conversion, that would be awesome for our American friends. Um, but it was 
just fantastic um, to, to learn it and to play with it because I have been playing with the Pioneer, which is also by Magicraft up at Brooklyn Brothers, um, which is a local shop to us and uh, really interested in sort of how the Magicraft wheels work more than anything. Um, I'm not in the market for a wheel, I'm just, I'm just interested um, in learning more um, and um, yeah, uh, just wanting to know what's out there. Um, a friend of mine just got a rose and she's really enjoying it and really loving working on it. What I really like is the large bobbins. Um, that is just awesome because I would be able to fit, I don't know exactly how much fiber this is, but um, it's definitely four ounces at least and I've got room. I could have put even more on there. I'm calling this fiber swamp water um, because it looks like swamp water. My friend Charlotte, um, she actually dyed this in the Sweet Georgia studio. Um, she was just playing with dyes one, one afternoon and she, uh, I've shown this to you guys before because I started off spindling this on Katrina's husband's uh, spindles on Eric's spindle and then I switched it over to the wheel because I'm just treating it as um, a play fiber because it's super wash BFL it got really beaten up in the dyeing process and um, the uh, but the colors are so amazing so I've just been play using it as playing I've got about eight ounces I think it's actually closer to six but um, I'm gonna spin the second bobbin this week and hopefully have it plied for um, our next show because I'm I want to finish it by the end of Tour de Fleece I also want to finish this spin. Um, I don't have anything written on my control card yet, but I do have the little sample yarn that I am spinning. And uh, this is the that Nest Fiber Studio that I was working on. Um, it's been on my wheel forever. Um, I think it's been on my wheel since, it's been a long time, right? It's been a long time. So I am hoping to actually have that finished by the end of the tour as well. So I sort of want to get these two spins cleared off the wheel and get them done because uh, this spin has been taking forever and I still have the whole second bobbin to do. Um, and I think a lot of it is because I really wanted to use it for August's enhanced content. So this spin has been taking me a while because I've been um, working on it at the same time. So a little spoiler there. Um, so that that those two spins are sort of what I'm focusing on and it's been really fun to play with Kim's wheel because uh, it's sort of opened a whole other um, thing because the wheel is, um, the Magicraft wheels are customizable. So uh, the, the Susie, you can put the orifice on either side of the wheel, which is really cool. So I've been playing with that a little bit and just sort of seeing what that's all about. Um, more for interest sake than anything. Next day I'm going to the outside pool. Yeah, I'm hoping you can go to outside swimming again. I'm ho I hope so. But I'll wear my goggles. You're going to wear your goggles? In the outside <laughs> pool. Yeah? Okay. Um, I think I think that's it for today. I'm just looking at the uh, chat channel. Oh, I love it. So Eve, Eve has a question for you, Nora. Are those magical goggles? Are they magical? Yeah, they're magical. Are you a superhero? Are you a supergirl? Supergirl. <laughs> um, I think that's everything for today. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I talked about or about uh, playing with the Magicraft or anything? I'll just wait for them to answer, Nora. I think you guys, I'm just waiting because I don't want to cut the show off. We were recording for about 40 minutes, so um, I try to keep the shows under an hour. And I'm not going to be able to sit here with Nora on my lap for too, too long because she's heavy. Are you solid muscle? Are you super strong? I'm not super strong. You're not super strong today? How about Owl? Is Owl super strong? Mm -hmm. Are you tired? So the kids have been getting up super early, super early. Um, Eve is wondering, with regards to the mismatch singles, could you wet the first and snap and thwack it? Um, are you wondering, Eve, like to do that, like wind them off as, as a skein of singles and then do that and then, and then ply them? Um, and then ply them? And... <laughs> you Let me, do you want to go back out? Do you want to go back out? Because I need to talk. 
Do you want to go back out? Are you done sitting here? No, you want to stay here? Okay. Um, yeah, so I'll just let you answer Eve before I answer that. Um, if And then I said it helped with the handiness thing, handedness thing. Yes, so the Magicraft helped a huge amount because when I moved the orifice to the left side and then I was drafting forward with my right hand, um, I found I could actually physically turn my body. Oh, it's stuck in your hair, sweetie. I don't want my daughter. Okay, but it's stuck in your hair. There you go. Okay, I'll hold on to them. Um, I found that I could really um, uh, control my that right hand a bit better rather than having the orifice up in front of me or even on the other side. Um, and then uh, for long draw, I put it on the other side and I was playing with it on the other it's side. And that mama. was um, that really worked really well as well. So I think I've got um, some ideas of sort of the more I do it and the more I play with, with uh, drafting forward with my right hand, the better it gets. And I didn't say this at the beginning of the show, but the flax, the bast fibers, I'm finding I can only draft forward with my right hand or draft back. Like it only works if I switch my hand dominance. And so that's actually kind of forcing my hand, literally, to um, fix that and to get my hands uh, matched up properly and working properly. How's that? <laughs> Bad. So the handy the handedness is is definitely um, a whole um, it, it's a work in progress, but it's been getting better and better and better. Um, Eve, so wind it off, wash, snap, thwack it, and then wind it back onto the bobbin um, to ply. So really interesting idea. My only concern with that is that then you're dealing with washed and finished singles um, that you could potentially full. Um, and then you're going to ply it with fresh singles that haven't been washed and haven't been snapped and thwacked and stuff. Um, one thing that I didn't say at the beginning of the show that I think is a really interesting idea is when you have singles that aren't matched up very well and the twist is all messed up and you're not happy with your one bobbin and the other bobbin's not much better or it is significantly better. One of the things that I've done in the past is as long as it's not super wash and as long as there's no super wash fibers that you've used in the combo spin, I will sometimes leave the yarn as a singles um, because sometimes you can get away with mass, um, like hiding quote unquote singles in your knitted fabric um, better than you can applied yarn sometimes um, unless you're going to go for a three ply. Nothing hides mistakes like a three ply but with singles um, I knit the boneyard shawl out of singles that I had spun when I very first tried to spin singles and I wasn't very good at spinning singles yet. I didn't know about drafting consistency or the drafting zone. I didn't know any of that yet. And the shawl looks awesome because all of the singles bloomed and uh, filled in. And to the to the naked eye, you can't tell that there there's, there's any inconsistencies in the yarn at all. So winding the, the yarn off and leaving it as singles is definitely an option. You may just not want that much yardage. Um, but that uh, is definitely something to think about as long as there's no superwash fibers in there. Because if it's superwash, it will fall apart over time. And in your knitted or woven fabric, it will absolutely fall apart if you leave it as singles. Because I've been there and I've tried it and I did it and it didn't work. <laughs> so please don't make my mistakes that I made. Right? Right. Um, yeah, three ply forever. It always makes singles prettier. Yes, it's so true. Three ply always makes things look better. I think that is it for today. Um, I don't think Nora is going to leave. I think she wants to hang out with me. Um, she got up way too early yesterday morning and this morning. So I'm hoping that we can get her through the day and get her through because she had a tough, tough day yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, you were tired. So, uh, and we've got the birthday party this <laughs> Case in point, um, we've got uh, the birthday party this afternoon. So I'm going to go focus on my family. And thank you so much to everybody for joining me. I so appreciate the time that you spend here and the time that you spend with me and uh, listening to my projects and asking questions and sharing your own. I just think that's awesome. And it's so inspiring. And you guys are amazing. So until next time, happy spinning. And I will see you guys in the Slack channel. For more, please visit patreon.com slash wellforpearls or wellforpearls.com for show notes. Have a happy Saturday, everybody. Bye. Can you say bye? Is that will say bye? You have to use your words. They can't hear you. Bye. <laughs>